Thank you very much, EB, for the $50 donation. Amazing work. Keep it up. And it seems that we are now ready to begin the magical quest starring Mickey Mouse, being run by Le Hulk. Hell yeah. Hi. Hello, hello everybody. This is uh, the Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse on the Super Nintendo. I'm going to run that in hard mode. Just go to the options, make sure that this is going to be hard. And it won't, uh, it won't disappoint. <laughs> uh, behind me I have Randy to Josh, who has also run this game. He's the guy who introduced me to, the, to it, so thank you deeply. You're and, very welcome. And my friend, uh, Head Riser. I, a few people got your name. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so um, the start, uh, the timer does not start uh, on uh, one P game. It's going to start when I get control. So I will cue you. Don't worry. There's story, but we'll cover yeah, that at the end. Yeah, if you want to. It's not that interesting, to be honest. Well, this is oh, going to start really soon. It's a little rude. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Hell yeah. So right off the bottom, bat, I'm going to try to clip through this house. Oh, I didn't get it, so that's fine. So we're going to do it the old way. Jump before this window so we don't have to walk. So this is a game where we don't have a run button. So I'm going to try to achieve speed by bouncing off of this enemy, like this. I'm going to concentrate a bit. Oh, dang, I got hit already. That's not very good. This category is very <laughs> brutal, just yeah, to let you know, because now if he has one, he has one hit left. That's, that's it, so. Yeah, I'm going to try to uh, not die, if we can. <gasps> wow, that was really nice. This is pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah, this is rough. Nah, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, I died already. <laughs> I, I tried to get some speed, but yeah, that's fine. Th this, this game always starts really poorly, generally. As when every speed game, uh, mm -hmm. World 1's the worst. So. Okay, well, we get to try again, at least. Let's see if I can get... Oh, okay, nice. Least. I got nice. that this time. That was pretty awesome. And this time you don't have to see the magician cutscene. Okay. Try to. Ah, oh, dang. <laughs> I guess I'm too nervous for this. Let's do it the old way, if I can remember it. My way. This is the way that I do. Uh, bounce on everybody. Okay, I guess we're going to walk it off. The slow and dependable way. Yeah, so, we made it first level. So all these strats <laughs> that you see Hulk doing are pretty much his own. Um, he brought the time down from, I want to mm. say, 16.15 down to like 15.45, all by these small minor movement optimizations. It's really ridiculous. Oh, dang it. I didn't even get that jump. And the game's impossible. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah the, the fact that I only have two hearts in hard mode makes it really complicated. So what I want to do is to try to hang on to this block and uh, see if I can carry it all the way. Jump here. No, jump down. Okay. All right, we got this. So I want to hang out to this block so I can use it on the on the mini boss, which is coming up. This mini boss uh, is RNG dependent, and unfortunately, the fact that I died in level two reset the RNG. So I have pretty much no idea what he's gonna do. <laughs> so this is gonna be playing really, by ear. It's gonna be really fun. We want yeah. the Josh pattern. Yeah. No, this is gonna this is gonna be the Josh pattern. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. Right. He named that. I didn't. So I don't know. Yeah, Josh pattern is the pattern that Josh got in his PB, so that's that's why the name stuck, at least for me. Uh, what is that you're gonna do? Okay, w what I want him to do is to s go in the air and summon his minions, which he doesn't seem to want to do right now. Yeah, this is a really terrible pattern. This is pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. I want to be on his left too, so that he I can use several of his minions because that does more damage than jumping on him. And, and if he throws right, he throws a different pattern, so it's kind of hard to use all three of them. Yeah. Okay, we nice. finally beat him. Nice. All right, this is a really bad start, I'm not going to lie, but maybe it's going to pick up from here. So now level three, there's going to be a lot of uh, using slopes to gain speed, because this game, game actually does not have a run button. So he, oh, he uses okay. slopes to maintain speed and jumping mm. to keep it going. Yeah, because you, your speed goes goes out when, when you are not jumping on an enemy or when you are on a, a, running on flat ground. Can this, okay. 
So let's see if I can take some speed from here to skip a little bit. It's possible to, to go from one of these uh, logs to the other, but yeah, that usually you, you cannot really do that if you're not a task because there's that B blocking you. OK, jump off this guy. And we're to the boss of this level, of this world, actually. So just before the boss, we can corner boost here. Boom. <laughs> Yay. I get, save I, the frames. Save the pixels. I lost minutes, but I'm saving pixels. <laughs> Let's go. Every tiny bit counts. <laughs> yeah. OK. I have to time it really carefully. OK, I didn't get red phase. So what he did just there is he actually skipped a phase, because usually you would hit him twice, and he would go into an invulnerable phase and turn red, rage, and bounce all crazy across the screen. But he got so close and timed that precisely to where he was able to skip that phase and right. just had him jumping around like that. Ooh. Yeah, I, nice I, double hit. Yeah, I did the swag finish, because you can hold a block and uh, have the boss hit you, and that will make me uh, lose the block in, in immediately, and the block will uh, hit the enemy. So I basically got, got the last hit at the first possible frame, so that's why I did it. I did it because I had my two hearts, so might as well do it. Oh, and we have uh, some time for one donation, because there's going to be a bit of a cutscene here. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Yagamoth, for the $10 donation. Oh, nice. oh hi, Yago. Always a pleasure to see a grandmaster of crushing SNES records run. I wish you good luck and have fun. Also, yeah. hello to the catch and have fun, everyone. <laughs> thanks, Yago. Yeah, thanks, Yago. Nice to hear from you, buddy. So there I got uh, a new costume, which is the magician costume, probably the best one in the, in the game, because magic is very strong. It's going to be very powerful against uh, bosses. You're able to charge it, so yeah. you're able to get a full charge on it. I don't know how many bars it takes, but uh, you're able to get a good amount of full charges, and you're going to use mm -hmm. that on bosses throughout the game. OK, I'm going to watch the leaves falling from the sky to see that RNG is good. OK, RNG is good. In this world, you want to manipulate it completely so that uh, the, the boss in the level 2-4 is favorable. So far, we should be good. Hopefully, I don't uh, fail the mini boss of this level to keep the, um, the manipulation going. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be relevant in 2-4 when we get there. I, I, don't worry, I will explain. Yeah, so that's the thing with RNG manipulation in this game is it carries through multiple levels, and it's very precise. Um, as he said earlier, when he died, it reset RNG on the mini-boss on 1-2. So, I mean, it's it's very precise. Yeah, that's why the, the mini-boss was painfully slow. It's because it was unmanipulated. But unfortunately, I died, so I, couldn't, I got, could not really help it. OK, here I want to beat this mini-boss in a certain way. All right. I want to keep really close to him. So I manipulate his jumps in a certain way. I just want to make sure that every time I hit him, I, I, I do it with full charge. And he's still doing things extremely precise to make sure that RNG carries over to the boss. So, it's yeah. going to go through in this level, too. So far, we should be good. A little bit of corner jump here. I okay, can see with the falling leaves that RNG is good so far. And here, I'm going to try to retain the speed from this slope. OK, I got it. Yeah, you need to do a little bit of a jump, then uh, uh, let go of the D-pad and repress it, just so you can keep your, keep your speed and uh, al be aligned with the patterns of, this, of the clubs. Let's go on the top. And now we're going to fight a giant spider with the big Pete uh, head. With RNG manipulation that yeah. carried through since stage one. So. OK, well, let's, let's see if I can do this. OK. Nice. nice. <clears throat> so that was the whole point of manipulating RNG in, the, in, the, in this whole world, such that uh, Pete will end up being in that exact position. So I can tuck myself between that block, that still block on the top left, and Pete's head, because he has barely any invincibility frames. So I can do the rest of the hits by jumping on him and like infinitely hit him. And that magic, he wasn't mashing, by the way. That's like precise hitting to make sure. Because if you mash, yeah. you won't cast really anything. Yeah, exactly. So now this is going to be an auto scroller. So we have time for a few do donations, if there's any. All right, thank you very much. A random plint for the $100 donation. Thank you very much, Vince Carls, for the $100 donation. Mm, thank you. Thank you very much, Pierpont Lemkin, for the $235 donation. Woo! <laughs> Woo! And thank you very much, Anonymous, for the $300 donation. Mm, nice. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much for the donations. 
Uh, you can keep going. Just a few, a few more. It's an auto scroller time. Yeah. <laughs> There's course. really not much going on here. Yeah, I gotcha. All right. Thank you very much, Edward Malis, for the thirty-five dollar donation. Thanks for giving me something fun to watch while distressing from work. This goes towards upgrading Virtual Highlight 101% because that game is a wonderful mess and I want as much of it as possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, we're getting to the end of this auto score, so I'm going to charge my magic. I broke exactly four blocks to manipulate the pattern of the upcoming mini boss. So let's see if I can do it. Yeah, the, still that, hard. <laughs> that RNG manipulation carries over through a lot of levels. You'll be seeing him carry it through. It's, uh, Really, like I oh. like said, precise, and that's not the, walk, quite walk, the best thing. <laughs> walk too, too early. All right, still, still good, though. Still yeah. good. OK, so I took a hit, which is OK, because there's going to be uh, a heart refill at some point. And introducing a new costume, this is going to be the fireman costume, because apparently we're, we're in hell or something. <laughs> that's usually what I <laughs> have to believe, yes. Yeah. The, yeah. Back, the background's not so appealing, but... I mean, it could be California. Mm -hmm. I'm from there, yes. It's pretty all accurate description. Yeah, with all that's, the forest fires. That's possible. Um, uh, big shout out, though, to uh, the sound design in this game and the OST. The soundtrack is just amazing and it's beautiful and it really carries just Mickey in its like purest sense. It's really a, just a beautiful thing to hear. All the levels. Yeah, here I'm going to have to be careful with my use of uh, water, so that was pretty good. That was a skip, by the way. Yeah, you don't have to <laughs> wait for the platform cycle. And this is the first level where I'm going to take an intentional hit at some point. It's going to be coming up. There's going to be um, a big seeding of flames, and I want to pass through it at some point because I don't want to have to wait for it. The waiting is slow. So here, I can get hit by this fish from the side. You have to make sure that you get hit from the side. If you get above him, he will just... Uh, eat you alive and you die. And that jumping out of the water is pretty precise too, because there's a little gap there where it's a little bit deeper, and uh, you actually could fall in there and swim. This part sucks, I hate this part. Yes, Ooh, everybody that's, does. That's exactly why. Yeah, they, we call them the Josh bats. <laughs> yeah, I die there a lot. And yeah. they, they are RNG. And RNG is not really possible to manipulate because of the previous level. And since you have one heart, it takes you very the, back to the beginning of the stage, so. Yeah. Okay, this boss is kind of complicated to optimize because he regenerates itself when I'm not hitting him. So I have to be take, take him in some sort of loop pretty carefully. Okay. Nice. Ooh, nice. Yeah. That was a 387 the end of the timer. That's all right. That's all right. That's not too bad now. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not sure, but this I could maybe still make the, the estimate. I'm not sure. <laughs> Even though I lost like two minutes in World 1, it might be possible. I'm glad that this yeah. game just destroys everybody, even Hulk. Yeah. So it's really nice to see that that happens. Yeah, yeah but on, <laughs> honestly, I, I, I knew it was going to happen. Like, World 1 is so brutal. But that's fine now. I have my confidence. So here's the best suit. It's um, Bionic Mickey. Uh, <laughs> and it's really a suit that you don't use that much, but as a child, it's probably one of my favorites. It is, it is my favorite to use. It's really fun. So you get this grapple hook. And you can use it for all sorts of things. You can put yourself up platforms like this. So shout out to Reeves, who found out a lot of strategies for this game, especially how to beat this level faster than what we used to do. And now, the gatekeeper of this game, level 4-2. Mm -hmm. Now, OK. Let's not die. Ah! That was so close. So it's really <laughs> fastest to take this level through the bottom yeah. section, and it's very aggressive. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a really aggressive, aggressive strategy. And it's even more aggressive that Hulk does it the task way and goes through the first pit. So. Yeah, the, the old way is to go through the, the second pit, but the first pit is faster by like 1.5 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it in a marathon. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I, won't, I won't show off everything that I've done for this game. We want the strats, dude. We need them. Like I said All earlier, Hulk totally rerouted this game in a sense. As much as you could reroute a game that just tells you to go from left to right, uh, movement optimization is just okay, insane good. in this game that he did. It's really crazy. So we're going to switch here to the magic suit because normally you want to grab onto these. Giant boss bird's going to fly by, pushes you off. But you know what? We don't want to do that. It takes too much time changing suits. Uh, what size is he going to be that was, all, that was okay. He, he will die in like two hits or three. Okay, nice. <clears throat> Pretty so, easy. So if you're to the far left or right of those bottom two nests, 
um, you could actually hold the opposite direction of the way he's coming in and stay yeah. on those ledges. Yeah, you have to go where he starts from and go the opposite direction to not get uh, carried away by the, by the wind he creates. Okay, so next level is the ice level, and for some reason it actually turns out to be sort of the easiest, apart, apart from the boss. <laughs> Such good music. Yeah, music is really nice too. So, yeah, these, these are ice physics, so just like this, the rest of the game, I try to exploit um, slopes going down and jump up slopes going up to not lose speed, and also using those ice cubes because they give me some additional speeds. And that boinging noise, by the way, is yeah. it's pretty awful. <laughs> Okay, here, the, level 5-2 is a little bit more finicky. The, I, I won't use all the ice cubes because uh, they make you faster, but they reduce Mickey's speed. So after you, are, you, can, you come out of it, you might lose some speed. So it's not optimal to take all of them. There's one I skipped. Okay, 289, that's good. All right, boss, boss time. I'm going to use a music cue for the first hit. I'm going to try to hit him as soon as he appears. Let's see. Now. Got it. So that actually early hit uh, skips a big chunk of this fight. Ah, that was not optimal. Mm, that wasn't either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. Yeah, that was the poor man's uh, ending of this of this uh, <laughs> boss. But that's fine. <laughs> that's how I finish it. So yeah, yeah. It sounds about right. And we're out of suits, by the way. We have no more. Yeah, there's no going to be suits. there's going to be a tiny cutscene, so we can go for a few donations here. Thank you very much, KLPKT, for the twenty dollar donation. Magical Quest was my first ever game, though on Game Boy Advance rather than Super Nintendo. It took young child and me years to get through it, so I'm excited to see it broken, beaten in minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, so we going to the last world of the, of the game, the castle. And right off the bat, I'm going to turn into a Bionic Mickey. So the whole point of this is to optimize the third level of this. But it's also use, useful to have it here. OK, I still got my speed. It's actually hard to keep the speed after throwing that block. It's a pretty tight move right yeah. there. Yeah. Let's jump on this guy, pick up an arrow block, and go to the end. So this, in terms of routing, this is a bit of a weird world because uh, all the levels have several endings and you have to know which one you have to take. And in this level, you are expected to take, uh, to use these uh, magic carpets to go down, but we're gonna actually take this hit so I can go on the spikes without dying because those spikes are instant death. So that skips a little bit of the level. It's a really nice move mm. right there. Usually you'd have to use magic, magic carpets take forever. Okay, we're coming to the whole point of being Bionic Mickey is to try to use this arrow block and pick up another one as soon as I release it. So let's see if I can do it. Ah, I missed it up. That's okay. It's, it's a really difficult move. That's fine. I will have to turn into a fireman and do the old strat. Uh, but that's okay. It's like three or four seconds slower. I have only one heart for the rest of the game, so let's hope I don't die. <laughs> And that's normal, by the way, so... Yeah, because I took that uh, hit in 6-2. In yeah. And you have to take the left ending. The right one will take you to a mini-boss, and you have to redo a level. Okay, final boss time. Uh, time, time is going to be when, I, when he takes the last hit. I will take... I will say... I will tell you, don't worry. Yeah, I got him... Yeah, I got him in a loop. Pretty good. Yes. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's gonna be the lant. Yeah, it's the lanterns immediately. That's awesome. That's great. All right, I didn't die. <laughs> Mickey's death finger, by the way. That, Time. That evil point. <laughs> you clutched it no. out, underestimate. Oof. <laughs> Final time uh, is nice. of course. That, that was okay for dying three times. <laughs> and and game overing. Yeah, and losing like two and a half minutes in the first world. Oh, right. Uh, I, I expected it to be to, to go like that because, yeah, world one is arguably the hardest, and uh, starting with the, the stress of, of GDQ, I kind of expected it. But that's fine. I'm still happy about this run, happy that I showcased this run. So, just a little bit of story. 
It was all a dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. that famous plot, so. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a Doki Doki Panic ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a couple of shout outs to, to wrap it up. Uh, shout outs to Randy George, who introduced me to this game, as I said earlier. He has a really good time at it. Uh, maybe you want to take it back? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah, shout outs to all, all the people who played this. Uh, Darbin has run this, and there's also Reeves, who has uh, find, found a lot of optimization for easy mode, which I managed to carry to hard mode. So, yeah. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks for having this game. And uh, really happy to be in GDQ. So enjoy the rest yeah. of the marathon. Yeah, enjoy the rest. And good luck to the next runners. All right, very nice job, Hulk. Mm. Thank, Thank you very much. All right, we are going to be taking a short break, and when we get back, we will be having an interview with the Black Tastic, who will be running Guacamole 2. Game's done quick. Game's done quick. Game's done quick. Oh, oh. Game's done quick. Raising money. Game's done quick. For charity. Game's done quick. Making people happy. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, there's nothing funner than watching a speedrunner accomplish a task incredibly fast. Yeah. Hey, I'm Omnigamer, and I wrote my new book, Speedrun Science, to help newcomers and veterans alike through the full process of investigating, routing, and performing speedruns. I also introduce speedrunning's rich history, how its rules evolved, and a whole lot more. Pre-order now at Fangamer.com. Gris is a serene and evocative journey presented through stunning art and animation and a breathtaking soundtrack. Available now on Nintendo Switch and PC. Visit grisgame.com for more about Gris and developer Nomada Studio. The Twitter, at Nomada Studio BCN. All right, and now we have an interview with Guaca uh, Guacamole 2 runner, the Blacktastic. Take it away, Kazeron. What's up, AGDQ 2019? It's your boy, Kazeron, with your boy, the Blacktastic. How are you doing this morning? Doing all right, man. How are you? Uh, I'm tired. I'm ready to go back to sleep. <laughs> so let's, let's get the basics out of the way here. So what got you into speedrunning in general? Uh, when I was growing up as a kid, I was given like a lot of like uh, retro, like, you know, what, rather retro, but uh, a lot of action platformers, uh, like the Donkey Kongs, Mega Man Xs, a lot of the games that you can, that are like fairly short in its length. Um, so as a kid, like I, I would just go through these games like multiple times over. So uh, I would always like challenge myself in a way, like every time, like, you know, how can I beat this in like a faster way or like a cooler way, you know, things like that. Uh, it wasn't until like maybe about like 10, 12 years ago that I was like flipping through like Speed Demos Archive I saw a speed run for Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is like one of my favorite games of all time, um, by Rom Scout. So I, by, by the way of like him like breaking the game to go fast, like like the glitch hunter inside of me was like so fascinated. So um, like I kind of prided myself on like 
playing my favorite games, you know, fast, like the way I want to. Right. So what got you into Guacamelee 2 specifically, especially since you were more focused on those older games for such a long time? Uh, Guacamelee is uh, largely reminiscent of like, of, like, the Castlevania Symphony of the Night, like, well, as more known as, like, the Metroidvania genres now. Like, a lot right. of indie uh, developers have, like, uh, truly adapted, or, sorry, adopted that genre into, into its own, you know, big thing. Uh, Guacamelee 2 has, like, a large array of, like, all these arenas, all these special items, and, like, all these little, you know, little tricks and power-ups that were reminiscent of, like, Symphony of the Night or, like, Super Metroid, where it's, like, you know, if you get super powerful, you can complete this game, like, you know, um, in such a uh, short amount of time. Um, like, just the way that you can explore everything, or if you know, or if you route, like, you know, route everything, uh, in your head, <laughs> yeah, uh, you can just complete it faster. You can just like blow through the game, like uh, simply astounding. I, again, like so many like uh, areas in the game where um, you're supposed to like collect things, like you can just kind of like skip over, you know? Right. So let's uh, let's be a little froggy here. Let's skip to some social media right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, at Taladin. I hope I said that right. Do tomatoes belong on guacamole? No. Uh, strictly Pico de Gallo, sir. <laughs> and then we also have at Sal's underscore Waslib. I'm probably killing all your names. Just <laughs> at me and yell at me. What's the key differences and key similarities between the first game and this one? Which is actually a great question since Guacamelee 1 was ran at a GDQ previously. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Grimelios. Um, the, a lot of the key uh, similarities you'll see are like within like the human like power ups and like all the special moves. Uh, you do have the ability to turn into a chicken, uh, aka the boyo. Uh, you do have all these uh, special moves that are still uh, present in the Guacamelee 2 game, um, especially for the speed tech. Uh, there is a certain wrong warp technique that we use to traverse like this again like this massive uh, landscape. Um, so you'll be seeing that largely. Um, more within Guacamelee 2 just because, like, the area is just, like, so huge. So you were talking about, like, wrong warps and stuff like that. Are there any other cool tricks within the run that we should expect to see? Um, definitely one of my favorite tricks is uh, the swap hop. It's, it's a way to gain, like, an infinite amount of height. Um, and it's a pretty addictive uh, uh, exploit. Like, I, I found it once, like, in a casual playthrough, and it's like, oh, this isn't really intended. You're supposed to, like, get an ability to, like, wall run or something. But once you swap hop, you just can't stop. <laughs> it's a good advertisement to try to get some potential runners into this game. Um, <laughs> since we're talking about that real quick, if somebody wants to pick up Guacamelee 2 as a speed game, what kind of resources are available? Uh, there are a lot of resources available on the speedrun.com um, resources. We do have uh, multiple routes. Uh, laid out for you guys. Um, shout outs to uh, Namki, who couldn't be here, but he's an insane uh, tech runner and also the current world record holder of the any percent category. Um, and we are in the Discord, so feel free to uh, find us on a Discord. Uh, a lot of us from all over the world, pretty much, um, a small yet dedicated community, like, will help you get into our game. Like, like, it's really fun. Like, I can't wait to show it off. I do have one more question for you be before we throw it to prizes. What's better? Queso or salsa? So, <laughs> uh, salsa you can kind of like, you know, play around with as a word, you know, uh, to kind of like a double entendre for a fun dip or maybe a fun <laughs> dance, you know? Um, if, if there was no like guacamole for guacamole, I would rather have salsa mele, you know? Like an actual true to form, like kind of like fighting sort of thing, you know, like let's dance, you know? I'm more of a queso guy, but salsa yeah. is pretty poetic for something like this. <laughs> Anyway, so we do have Scent over here with us to talk about some prizes. So, Scent, you want to scoot over and say hi to everyone? Oh, I'd, I'd always love to scoot over, Keys. Uh, how are you guys doing this morning? I'm tired. I'm also really hungry since we're talking about guacamole you, so much. You too? Yeah, you know, I actually had a really important question for the two of you watching that interview. So what is the most effective, uh, you know, application method of guacamole when it comes to getting it inside of your body? Are, are you a chip guy? Do you like burritos? You know, how do you like to guacamole? You know... A burrito actually sounds really good, so bye. Uh, wait, wait, Keys, you're, you're, just, you're just leaving? I'm hungry! But is, no. is, is, is he coming back? No. Give me one. No guacamole, I don't like it. What? Yeah, sorry. 
Oh, uh, anyway, Black Test, it's great to have you here. I actually had a quick question for you, for you before I started throwing off some prizes. What's um, up, son? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, you mentioned, you know, kind of your origins playing, uh, playing Metroidvanias, playing a lot of those classic games fast. Uh, I know you're also a really big guy in the fighting game scene, too. Oh, so fighting games are amazing. Like, like right? even the old school ones, like, you know, shout-outs to IFC Yipes. Uh, with Marvel 2, oh, uh, I know it's a favorite of yours. When, when I think of food and commentary, I think of Yipes. That just immediately comes to mind. But I'm, I'm curious if you know that maybe had any influence on you picking up Guacamelee just as a game that you know by by itself has a lot of kind of elements of beat 'em ups and, and fighting games in it. Uh, I mean, like you, you're going to be seeing that with like a, a lot of the arenas in this in this game, where it's uh, special moves that that are reminiscent of like fighting games, the Rooster Uppercuts, kind of like a you know Ken's Fire Shore. You can, um, there, you know, there's a lot of like brawler um, aspects like within it that you know kind of make it like its own fighting game. Sure. Well, I mean, the run is super sick, and I'm really looking forward to watching it. But before we get there, guys, we got some awesome prizes to talk about. Uh, so from our friend Phantom Burn, we have this uh, really cool SNES switch dock. So it's, uh, you know, it's an old-school SNES modified uh, so that you can just you know, slap your switch into it. Um, it's super cool. It even modified uh, some of the, the back ports on it. So it's got you know, USB. It's got HDMI out on it. Oh. Yeah, no, it's, it's really nice. The eject button will just pop the switch right out of the dock. Super cool there, a $10 minimum donation, and all the prizes we're talking about right now are going to be from uh, right now until the end of N++ a little bit later this morning. Um, so we have that. Now, for uh, $15, we have a wonderful Cypher and Trevor papercraft. Let me just reach behind me and grab that real quick. This was actually made by the, uh, the RB Social Media team live uh, on Monday, right, right over here at the... Uh, really? Yeah. It's, Super cool. I really love what they did this because they combined like their traditional paper craft where you know they're cutting out pieces of boxes and packaging material to sort of make a picture with almost like pixel art. So you know they cut out like a little bit of individual squares for each of them and you know put them together. I love it. It's super cool. It's a $15 minimum donation and it comes with an Arby's gift card. Oh. Yeah, so I mean you got you gotta get on that. $15 donation for one of a kind artwork and a gift card, that's a good deal. You can have the bits for a <laughs> bite as well. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um and uh, we have quite a few cards here from our friend uh, over at Shuglup Sketches. Um, I believe there are 32 individual postcards here. I mean, you got, you got Booze, you got Pac-Man, you got Mario with some Fire Flowers, you got, you know, Nurse Joy here, you got some Yoshis, you got everything you can want. You get like 32 of these cards, each of them is hand-drawn, unique, they're all great. Like, I mean, you can do whatever you want with them. You can send them as postcards, you can put them together in a collage, you can use them to eat guacamole if you're into that. I, I don't recommend it, but I mean, hey, they're, they're your cards if you win them. You can do what you want with them, and it's only a $20 minimum donation to get in to win all of them. Again, that's from right now until the end of N++. Um, and if guys, of course, Donating for any of those prizes is going to get you uh, on your way to being entered into the chance to win our grand prize, this absolutely amazing Hylian Shield and Master Sword directly behind me, courtesy of Heroic Replicas. You know, I'm just going to kick back so you guys can actually uh, take a look at it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, these things are absolutely amazing. They're one-to-one -one replicas of the Hylian Shield and Master Sword from Breath of the Wild. They're full metal. You just they are sheen. Yeah, look at no. that sheen. But look, at, look at the shine, man. Oh. They, they look great. Oh. Um, they're super cool. $250 minimum donation. And I know some people are like, whoa, hold up, Sen, hold up. But it's cumulative. So, I mean, hey, mm. you donate $5 now, $10 later, and, uh, you know, you get to $250 by the end of the week through any combination of numbers, and bam, you're entered to win, I mean, these one-of-a-kind of replica pieces. You, you, can't, you can't go down to, like, the blacksmith shop and, and get something like this, man. You, you got you to gotta custom order this kind of stuff, and it's... Probably valued at about four thousand dollars, I think, off the top of my head. So I mean, it is it is a valuable piece right there, and certainly a, a one of a kind one as well. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions about upcoming, oh, hey, Keith, every place is closed. Is the prize segment done? Uh, uh, almost. You didn't, you didn't give me a burrito. No, they're cl every the place closed. Oh, go go find one. Go find one. Oh. But while he finds me a burrito, uh, we're going to sign off for now. Uh, as always, head over to gamesdonequick.com. Check out the tracker. It's going to have all the information you need on upcoming games, speedruns, incentives, prizes, all the good stuff. Uh, I've been sent. This is the Blacktastic. Uh, enjoy the Guacamelee 2 run. But first, we're going to kick it back up to the front as we get ready for Puzzle Bobble with Alta Biscuit. <laughs> 